there's people who come straight up from uh, the hood, and it takes a while to get along. But I mean, if you've ever heard, have you ever, if you've ever heard Afro man talk up the sing about Palmdale, that's accurate because people come up here, they get a second chance. Some people take that second yeah. chance, and some people don't. You know, and it's uh, you know, it's up to them. But Palmdale is a place where people can put up with it. You know, it's not about oh, what the hell you are. Nobody happily, cares. Happily, most people are getting along now, and I think that's the really nice thing about the isolation is they're like, you know yeah. what? I don't care what kind of stupid social scriptures you want to put on me. Yeah. I, I mean, like this guy. And I understand that a lot of this guy, unfortunately, does kind of come back up from the prison system, yeah. which is really just what it is. It's yeah. Now it's, it's just a horrible thing. It's a horrible situation. It's horrible, and it makes people do horrible things and think horribly. And that tends to resound onto the street, you know what I mean? But happily, you know, the higher up you go in society, the less it matters. The lower you go down, the more it matters. So yeah. it depends on what your neighborhood consists of. Yeah, this of. is why you never want to go to prison, by the way. Because <laughs> you will be stuck with you the people you look like. You know? It won't matter what you want to do, yeah. you know. And it, and it goes on all sides of the I mean, you might be for whatever thing and not dig all that stupid yeah. shit, but that's all my idea. Keep your nose clean. Don't go to jail. First of all, don't go to jail because it's stupid to get busted in the first fucking place. You yeah. know what I mean? Try and do shit legally. But, yeah, avoid it at all costs. I mean, the only... Stupid people don't stupid Eventually, shit. I do think... Well, this is back to something more serious. Yeah, just, oh. but like, or less serious, whatever. But, like, more topical. Like, I definitely think I see something happening in August. And I don't know what it is, whether it's just for me personally, but I've been feeling something is coming in August. Um, I... I definitely think when I look around at this, I definitely think they're using this to start to lock us down. Um, offering us money is nice for me because I'm poor, but it's a sign that they're basically they're rolling out communism and we're going to not be able to move up above these levels as easily. And there'll be a little time before it's all locked down. So to, if you can go to college, get yourself a degree, get yourself up in the world, this is the time to do it. Okay. But like, uh, I definitely think that one of the things we should do is prepare ourselves to live off grid in, in case all this falls apart at some point. And I also think we might have to start eventually protesting more serious. I know it's getting very serious already. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure what we're going to have to do, but I'm going to start doing more magic toward it, toward better stuff and more meditations with you guys. Cause I know, that if you can hold light, and I was shown this like 12 years ago now, okay, I had a, a vision of this, and I know what's going on from the inside, kind of. And oh, if, yeah, Peggy. if you can hold light, you, you won't be hurt by this. You'll be protected. You'll have people carrying you through it. The only things that could, will happen to you are things that are specifically in your chart to happen to you um, and that you agreed to, but, you, but nothing random is going to happen to you. And if you're meant to survive, then you're going to be held and you will be protected. And even if you aren't, you'll be protected. But you are, basically, if you're here. So you're going to be safe. You just Like, this is why I'm doing these meditations, to show you how to bring in light, share your light with things around. Some of those things are your ancestors, and they kind of don't, maybe don't even look like that anymore. But, like, uh, you know, they just get dark. And you have, if you can share your light with them, you can help them become better, too. It's only a couple of days past Belton, so the energy is still there, that mid yeah. energy. And, yeah. again, bear in mind that for a lot of people, uh, you have to remember that May Day is preceded by Walpurgis Noct. Yeah. And April 30th is, like, the high holy festival for the Satanic people, the dark guys, for witches. Yeah. For people who are in the darkness, Walpurgis Noct, April 30th is their big night to do their whoopie do. So you kind of have that spilling over into a lot of the May 1st energy. But, again, it's all balance. You know, it's all polarity. They're doing their thing. That's cool. You do your thing. That's cool, too. But, yeah, try to draw in all that green, green, golden glowing. Yeah, yeah. Green, yeah. golden get glowing Get into nature. Nature energy. holds the yeah. most light on this planet. There's if you can get so way light. into nature, far away from people, you can get to the place. You'll feel it. You'll feel it. When, you, when, you when you're out there and you feel happy, that's because there's light there. And you're, that's, the, that's the light that you're feeling. Your body is absorbing light, like photonic light on another level. Try to really pay attention to all the new growth around you, the new flowers yeah. budding, any grass shoots, anything you see that represents life, really attune to it. Try to so much draw its energy into you as kind of by, by reflecting on it, by seeing it, acknowledging it, and praising it. Beautiful little thing. I love you. I love the energy. And then that energy you give mm -hmm. at will naturally come back to you. You have this nice little continuity and for a few seconds. Then you can kind of go on about your day, recharge. Remembering what's truly beautiful, you know, the life, the beautiful, beautiful.
beautiful life springing up everywhere, all the green, all that golden glowing life energy that's there just to counter all the darkness and negativity and death of the winter. I mean, the one thing I want to say is like, oh, I love crows. <laughs> I we love crows too. Ravens, too. ravens are, are are my favorite. They're cool. There's a lot of them around here. But um, don't be afraid to talk to trees and stuff. They actually hear you. They're aware. There's been you just gotta talk been... real slow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no joke. I mean, just <laughs> they're ants. <laughs> again, try to picture the the the. the, the to a tr- if you've ever been on like a little uh, fruit fly, the 24-hour life cycle, that's kind of what we're like then. This little thing is, oh, yeah. because our lives are so short compared to them, and our, our movements and our speech patterns and our vibrations so much faster, you really do kind of have to be like, oh. <laughs> and the tree's like, oh, tree, no matter how slow you go, you're still in hyper lapse motion too. That's cool. Look at the branches waving. Just try and you know what I mean. Too. Yeah, trees have a but lot. The energy. Of they can feel energy. the energy. You don't have to do it with They'll words. Help you, you can slow do it with down. energy too. They'll help you just slow feel down. loving yeah. towards the tree. But what's cool about trees is, for they've done scientific studies on this since the '60s. Okay, and I'll tell you the, the the guy the story the way I heard it, and it's you can look it up. It's this is on the internet. This is well known. Uh, the guy was doing experiments with plants. He put lie detector. Um, electrodes on the plant and he started thinking about burning a leaf and the lie detector went crazy so he started doing experiments with that and when and he set it up so that he was out so he wasn't in it and he, the thing was locked the thing was connected to the lie detector and he set it up so some shrimp would be boiled Aww. at a specific time. You're a sweet lady, I mean. Oh, I love hummingbirds. That's really nice because we just saw one the other day. I just mowed the lawn. Mm-hmm. And I guess it was something about the freshly cut grass that was attracting it because the little guy was all over for a good yeah. 10, 20 minutes. And we don't have a hummingbird here. We like to hang one up. It's just that when the brands the cats try attacking, so we got to hang one up there. But, um, yeah, they do. All pe- that's the thing. Mm-hmm. I don't have a problem with vegans, vegetarianism, anything. I do not. I yeah. never have. I just don't like the fact that they like, these things are alive and those things aren't. It's like, no, no, they're, yeah. No, man, yeah, everything's alive. Yeah, Even yeah. the rocks technically because are when alive. Because when the shrimp got boiled, the things, the plant got very upset. They, they've been able to reproduce oh, yeah. this multiple times. The plants are, he basically reads your mind or your emotions or energy and are aware of you. They're, they're not just, basically they're fourth dimensional beings that keep a, a physical body Birds as an anchor. And that's, that's basically their whole life is in the astral plane. So they're totally aware of you. Trees can actually change the electromagnetic fields around them and make wind come through them. That's why it seems like when the wind blows, they're talking to you because they are. They can actually make, change their electromagnetic field to make the wind blow. And that's, honestly, if I dug it up, that, that's all stuff that's backed by science. It's weird. The more we learn, the more we realize how we're just not aware. They've actually recorded plants screaming ultrasonic screams that are too high for us to hear. Like if you cut them or if you tear them, they they cry out, you know. But they don't if you eat fruit. Anything seed-bearing, squashes, tomatoes, eggplants, all those things, they don't cry out because they're, they actually make a natural and a, and a, um, a natural painkiller for so that you can pick their fruit because they want you to eat their fruit, you know. And... Uh, You know, I mean, honestly, if I was to work on a diet based on total no harm, I would be like only seed-bearing parts of plants and annuals, like spinach is an annual. It only lives once per year, so they they don't want to – they're they're generous plants, actually, so they don't want things to go to waste. Yeah, root things, um, potatoes, I need tubers, you know what I mean, all that. Yeah, you wouldn't eat carrots because it's the whole plant. You'd be killing the whole plant. But you can eat salmon because salmon – Wild salmon we only get when they're about to spawn and they're dying in, and they're about to die. So basically, we help them spawn and we harvest the meat. Again, this is you if know? you're trying to live that super yeah, scholarly. Yeah, I mean, I'm not lifestyle. able to do this with my budget. You, <laughs> That's the only thing. Go ahead. If sorry. You, no, okay. If you, <laughs> you know, have whatever dietary concerns, I mean, we. we yeah. We, all I'm trying to advise people yeah. to is just be aware that whatever you do in whatever way is going to have some consequence to something. Yeah. So just try to live in balance. Try not to eat more than you need. Yeah. Or eat less than you need. You know, try to grow your own stuff when you can. 
Um, if you're going to eat meat, try and get it locally sourced. Try to hope that it wasn't, you know, put through some shitty slaughterhouse or raised under horrible yeah. conditions. Yeah, I mean, if they're and local, they, at least they're local to me, I know how those animals are raised. They're raised pretty well, you know. They're raised in a, a normal way, you know, and they're, you know. We have lots of ranches around here, and mostly people keep chickens, so there's lots and yeah. lots and lots of eggs. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. And that's good because eggs, I mean, if, as long as you don't, because oh, the yeah, egg industry is bad. The egg industry is horrible. But if you can get local eggs, raise your own, ideal. If you can't, pasture raise is okay. It's not, it's still part of the egg industry. It's still not great. Yeah, cage free is kind of a misnomer. Cage free is just basically a lie because they, they're not in cages, but they're still in a, in a house right on top of each other. Pasture raised are the ones that are actually running around the yard and actually living like chickens are supposed to live. Yeah. And again, so, you know, a little, we've become sanitized as consumers. We like our meat yeah. to look a certain way. We like our eggs to look a certain way. Yeah. You know, we like the yeah. goat to look a certain way and all that stuff. And listen, mm-hmm. I have no problem with a brown egg, a blue egg, a red egg. I don't care. I mean, it's an egg. Well, there's not a chicken, and I'm, I'm happy. I really want to raise those ki- eggs, that, the, the, the ones that lay, uh, lay rainbow-colored eggs. Yeah. I'm really sweet in my Spanish class, and she's got wrenches, and she's got yeah. all those little things that lay that. But, you know, it, it's work. You but, like, as long as you can live in balance with things. Like, um, I was saying before, I'd seen a TED Talk that um, the whole world, the whole earth is des- desert, is turning into a desert, and it's because there aren't enough giant herds of cattle moving all over tearing up the earth and fertilizing it like they used to all the time everywhere. This is the problem with large-scale corn and wheat production because they, they, it makes it impossible for, say, bison to run around and do their thing, you know. They can't just move about the earth as they're supposed to. And as long as they, want, they can't, the earth will continue to turn into a desert or inflate all over. And, you know, and people will go, oh, why, you know, because we're altering the earth's biosystems to such a degree I mean, even now, I'm sure this, the one blessing about this is the ozone layer has actually clo- healed. It's completely closed because people have been staying home enough, and which proves if we just changed to some, we just changed to like electric cars, to solar cars, you know. Working at home. And working at home, we could make a difference that could last, you know, without having to kill millions of people. We could just slowly have one child for per person, and you know, over time, if we are careful, we can take care of this, and we can whittle down a little bit, you know, and yeah. that would be enough. It would be more than enough. Look at just staying home. Is I I I'm surprised, honestly. I did not think the Earth could heal this quickly, and I mean, I, I should have realized because I know that this world is very valuable. And they would not let it be put into a position where it was going to be permanently destroyed. Okay, it's too valuable. It's too. All of the Earth's resources are valuable to to aliens and all kinds of things on all kinds of levels. You know, they would not let it get hurt. So I should have realized that. But it's like I'm just so surprised and happy to hear it that everything is healing. Yeah, you know, okay. things are good. It's and gonna be okay. We. We want to leave you guys with a positive spin on things without trying to BS you know, yeah. or be down a happy trail because we don't want to do that. Like yeah. I don't believe in it. But I, I have been through some really intense personal struggles in my life and some really, really dark, bad times. And, yeah, there's always some at the end of it. You know what I mean? The way I look at it, man, is it, I've always said it. If you ain't strung out, incarcerated, or tits up, stop fucking moaning and get on with your life. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because yeah. I've had two of those things, and they suck eggs. And I'm going to be the third one at some point, too. So, you know, in the meantime, I'm going to live my life and be happy and be free. But we want you guys to be as well. Yeah. Hey, hey, how you doing, guys? Yeah, just listen, just keep, don't let yourself positive. live in fear. Because whatever happens is something you signed up for. Nothing is going to happen to you because of other people. You are in a p- bubble of your own, you're in your own world. You're the hero of your story. Like I said last you know? time. All I am is the wise witch coming to tell you that you're the hero and it's time for you to take your great journey. You know, I'm the hero of my journey, but to you, I play another role. You know what I mean? That's what we do. We play the rules for each other so that we can grow. The trick you know? in life is, is to be able to accept people do to you without being submissive or stupid about it. Oh, they can do what they want to me. No, they can't do what they want to you. Okay? You don't have to accept it. Yeah. You don't have to forgive them, but the point is, is don't let them trick you into doing what they do. Like I told you, when, when you die, when you go to that place of peace, when you can finally separate from this poor, beaten-up flesh, none of it will matter. 
I swear to you, I promise you, if it's I have true. any kind of spiritual insight throughout all my travels, the one thing I can promise you is what they did to you won't mean a thing. It's just stripped of you like nothing. you did, whether you were conned into it, deluded into it, forced into it, you still 